While we've been hard at work making sure we have a bathroom to use once we move in, there's one important thing we can't get for our home until we finish projects in the kitchen, our granite countertops. And a big thank you to Benjamin Moore for sponsoring today's video. Hello guys, welcome back to the cottage. We are actually in the kitchen. We've been doing amazing DIYs and the makeover on the guest bathroom has been going very well. But there's one little hiccup in the final design of the bathroom and that's getting our countertops. If you guys saw last episode, you saw that I got a, like a square sample of our granite and our soapstone. Now the soapstone is only going in the kitchen, but the granite that I picked for the island that is really, really beautiful, it has this beautiful rust kind of like vein in it, is going not only in the kitchen on the island, but on both of the vanities in both of the bathrooms. So our fabricator can't come out and measure to do the vanity in the guest bathroom that we need until we have all of the cabinetry. So we are back in the kitchen today, prioritizing the bottom cabinets in the kitchen so that when he comes out, he can measure everything at once. Now we also have to do the island and the island's gonna be a DIY in and of itself. I'm starting easy. I'm gonna finish the bottom cabinets. I have one face frame to make here, one cabinet in the corner there to make, two here for our like side cabinetry and then also the coffee bar. If you didn't catch the last kitchen makeover video where I DIY'd our kitchen cabinets, you should. I show you step-by-step step on how I did it. I have made some improvements. I've bettered my skill level, I guess, when it comes to making them, um, but they're coming along really well. We are slowly but surely making pretty progress. We are going to be ordering the cabinet doors custom to fit every space. And right now I'm building a face frame uh, which goes on the front of the cabinet to help it look finished, to help the cabinet sit really nicely together. Base frames are very simple. I just cut all of my pieces exactly to size. Then I use pocket holes to put it together, making sure it's square. The middle pieces, the ones that go horizontal, are the ones that get the pocket holes, and that's how we attach it to the sides here. Out. I kind of drew it and thought about symmetry and how I wanted them to kind of look on each side, drawers versus cabinets. The refrigerator is going to be over here on my right, your left maybe. It's going to be paneled and it's going to go all the way to the ceiling. So that side of the kitchen is going to feel really tall. So I wanted to create the same effect on this side but with just upper cabinets. So this is where you walk to the back door obviously. There's the back door. So we have cabinetry here. So lowers and uppers and under counter lighting all here. So I need to design, uh, before I build, I need to build this, but what do I build? I measured it and the space is pretty big. It's, we've got, we've got 47 inches total. Um, and that's all the way to the end here. I don't want it to go all the way. I think we should stop it at 45 inches. The, the largest one I did was this one. This one is only 34 and a half. So what do I do? Do I do, I could just do big drawers. I feel like drawers are so much easier to organize, even deep set drawers, uh, than cabinets. 
feel like I'll have more cabinets on the uppers and we should utilize the bottoms for more drawers. I'm gonna do big drawers. One big cabinet, three big drawers. Oh, this one's gonna be big. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do the back to a side first. I'm gonna put wood glue. this side for these two but this is like starting from scratch so I some of the tutorials I saw online for building cabinets some people incorporated the toe kick into the cabinet and it was an extra kind of cutout but since our floors are quite old and they're not exactly level by creating the two by four lift and toe kick I'm able to kind of like make it square and level and I have a little more play a little more room to like it for it to give it was also easier to do this to just build a two by four from scrap wood it's a big cabin. yeah you know now that I'm looking at this since this one's so much bigger I have a support for the face frame on the bottom here that I'm I can screw in but I don't have any support here and I may need to put it. I did these face frames pretty good. Clamps have become my best friends. Just to make them extra polished, I was gonna use just this wood filler. We're just gonna rub it right into the crack and let it dry a little bit and then sand it with some 220 so that so the face frame looks like one complete piece and you can't see the seams and it's gonna prep us to paint. Let's talk about the coffee bar. Now this is right off the kitchen next to the back door. This is the back door area. I have many, many, many pretty ideas for this little space because it's just unusual. I wanted to keep the fireplace that used to be here. It was the only one that was exposed still. And I'm like, I really would love to work around this somehow and it, for it to be architectural. So this is this wall is kind of like shorter so that I could have like a shelf thing happening up there with the fireplace, chimney, brick with you know, something on the side. So that up there needs to be its own kind of DIY on how I can do that. But inside here is gonna be our coffee bar, coffee pantry. We had two original doors that were leading from the entryway to the right room. Maybe that was our living room, I'm not sure, but it was two French doors, skinny ones with part glass. And when we built these walls, I brought them in and I was like, this is where this is gonna go. In the space, we're also gonna have the countertop. I want soapstone in here. So I need to build the bottom cabinets. I had a specific kind of look that I found that I really liked for the coffee bar storage. And it was this space. It was just like drawers and then the countertop sat on top and then there were shelving, obviously. Um, so I'm thinking I wanna do that idea so i don't want you to have to open a door and then open a, another container whether it's a cabinet door or pull out a drawer i feel like this being open makes sense for being inside of an enclosed space appalachian sunrise meets my skin even with my eyes still closed Feel it coming in Golden Golden I'll follow only golden 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 things Mountain Laurel high fives For miles in spring 
almost ate my lunch. <gasps> I was doing the face frame wrong like three times. It was just different than what I've been doing. I got really good at being robot and doing all the cabinets the same way. And then when I got to something that was going to be different and I wanted, I, the face frame couldn't overlap things. And like, then I was doing two cabinets. And, uh, it, was, it was the thing, but I did it. And this one's already installed done, installed, ready to go. I had a dream last night about this coffee bar. I ha often have dreams about my design projects and I had a dream that it was beautiful and it was all taupe and it had the dark, everything. If I have a dream about what I had already planned to do and how beautiful it might look and, and I realize that in my head, we're on the right track. So I have a sample of the color of trim that was original to the house that we're gonna be repurposing into these windows. So that's gonna be a DIY. So we need this as a sample. The faucets in here are French gold. I wanted to match the brass color that's on our oven. These are our lights, pendant lights that are going right here. Globe is really pretty. Let me show you the globe. If you guys follow my vlog channel, you would have seen these lights already. This is what it looks like. And they're incredible. They're very like, understated yet very shapely and textured it was the perfect light and i also got them on black friday and they just got here when we were in europe and they were very inexpensive i think i ended up paying around 150 160 dollars a piece for them um, and we got two of them two will be going over the island i want all of the rooms in the house to complement each other, but not to be identical. But overall, each space is going to have its own identity, um, but I like to think of them as sisters and not identical twins, or siblings, not identical twins. In the guest bathroom, I'm absolutely in love with the color decisions. We went with natural linen for the majority of the space and the walls, and then Tudor brown in the alcove and the ceiling, and it's absolutely beautiful both of these colors are benjamin moore so i have looked all through all of the fan books of the benjamin moore colors and i've selected seven potentials that we're going to be picking from and a big thank you to benjamin moore for sponsoring today's video you guys know i love their paints i love everything about them they have really helped us transform this house so far into something that i just truly love and it's it's perfection they have over 35 hundred colors to pick from. I like to order samples online from them, but I also love to get paints from a local store. They're helpful, they're friendly. They just go above and beyond to help me figure out exactly what types of paint that I should be using for specific projects. So if I have questions about it, especially like now I'm painting cabinetry. So that's not the same level of paint that we would do for walls. And there are over 7,500 Benjamin Moore retailers that are all locally owned. So you're shopping local, you're supporting a small business and I went in there to look at colors I looked at the fan decks and I picked seven colors that we're gonna be testing for the cabinetry and possibly the island once I picked these seven colors from the fan deck I went on Benjamin Moore's website because I like to see the color in a space and Benjamin Moore just recently updated their website that you can see the color at night in ambient light and harsh daylight. And it helps you get an idea of what that color is gonna look like in your space. So I found that really helpful. I also love to search online for anyone else that's used those colors so that I can get an idea of how they incorporate it into their space. It's really about selecting the right color with the right undertone that's the right complement to the other colors that we're gonna be using in the house. So if you guys are working on projects this summer around your house and you need some paint, definitely check out Benjamin Moore. Seven colors. I feel like every time I do a room, I, I pick more and more colors to choose. I like options, okay? Okay, so my process is always to start with what I don't like, what I can't see. I don't like this one. What is this one? This one looks really green to me. Florentine plaster. This is way too yellowy dark. What is this? Tourette. This one's too yellow. Ah! Bleaker beige. I think this one looks most like my inspiration picture and that's kind of what I wanted to get away from. I didn't want it that yellow. This is still too green. What is this? Clarksville gray. 
Clarksville gray, two, two green. I got a light, a medium, and a dark here. This one is the darkest. It's really pretty. It had ranch wood. It has a little bit of a lavender undertone. Grant beige. This one has like a lighter, like a, like a celery type green. This is pretty. This is like darker than that one. They all work. <laughs> That's pretty. And this is what they look like in the coffee bar. I'm gearing towards these two, ranch wood and pashmina. Yes, this one is kind of a chameleon color. When I place it with the soapstone and when, then when I, like that it's a little, have, has a cooler undertone and then I place it with like something warmer, it kind of takes on both. I think my gut's telling me pashmina, you guys. The prime, so we can prime tonight paint tomorrow. So we are using a primer first. This is bare wood and even on all of the walls in here, it's bare drywall. So we're using a primer everywhere. I'm using Benjamin Moore's Fresh Start High Hiding Primer. And you can also, if you're going with a darker color, you can tint it like we did for the bathroom. We went with that darker brown. So we tinted it in gray. We are in luck with the bottom cabinets that we don't actually need to paint the insides of the cabinets because they're mostly drawers. When we get to the upper cabinets, those are all gonna have to be painted inside and out because I want glass doors and shelves in those and you're gonna be able to see that. So we're gonna prime and paint everything that's still gonna be seen once we have doors and drawers and things like that. Good morning, guys, it's paint day. Romeo is back here. I've got him caulking all the little, you know, me and me board. I feel like he's gonna be just as particular <laughs> about filling all the holes as I am. Aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, he's already like doing a really good detailed job. So it is paint day. While that dries and that's done, we got all of that primed. Everything's primed. Um, we are gonna be painting the cabinets with advanced satin. Satin is the sheen because it's gonna be a little more durable than doing a flat or an eggshell. Before I paint though, I'm gonna go over all of the cabinet surfaces that we're painting with a light sandpaper. The object and the goal with painting cabinets and to have the most durable surfaces possible is light coats sanded in between. So we did primer, sand that a little bit. We're gonna do a thin coat of pashmina, sand that a little bit, and then do a second coat. Once we have all of the cabinets attached to the wall, there I can fill the seams. Our golden combination of layers for the perfect paint. Let's hope the color looks impeccable because in my dream, it looked beautiful. Okay, moment of truth on the color, you guys. Oh. So pretty. And it's gonna dry a little darker? Yes. Thin coats. So don't have a lot of excess on your brush like I did for, to start here. Just gonna kind of blend that out. Then we'll sand again and then another coat. I also always make sure that once I do like a top layer like this, I roll it that I'm not having any drips on the face frame because that's really the most important part to make sure that there's no drippage. Drippage. <laughs> Okay, so we made it back here to the coffee bar and I need to do a ceiling. The room needs a ceiling. My goal and design for this was to continue the beadboard. So the beadboard goes up the back wall and I wanted it to come forward on the ceiling. It's also easier for me to do beadboard versus drywall. I don't wanna to have to float anything. We have officially ran out of beadboard. We've used every piece that we've salvaged from the house, which is incredible. So I picked up a few pieces of beadboard from the uh, hardware store, and I'm just gonna put some braces up there. Essentially, we just need something that a beadboard to nail into. Put a long strip on the inside of this wall, on the front, the back, and the sides. Nail it all to it just with a finishing nail gun. 
um, and then it's we can prime it and paint it as well because we're ready to paint this wall all of this is primed and these cabinets so I'm gonna do that first the usual okay very excited about this color in this ceiling and new beadboard is much easier to install than salvaged beadboard this is the regal select interior in eggshell that we're doing for the walls and i'll come back with a little baby brush i'm ready for this space to feel like all encompassing like you're just surrounded by the same color i don't know something about it just like makes me really happy <laughs> And then it has a ceiling? That's major. I did not know how I was gonna do this and I just tackled it. Can you imagine this space with like glass shelves with a kind of like a pretty light sparkling down through the glass to the soapstone? I'm very excited. This roller actually gets into the beadboard. I don't think I have to use a brush, which is kind of incredible. We spent all last night finishing a second coat on all of the cabinetry and also in the coffee bar. And you guys, I love this color. I know all of the elements aren't back in here yet, but I can see the vision kind of come, starting to come to life. We keep taking small but really meaningful progress in this house and we've come a long way. So I'm excited to keep going. Since I did light coats of the paint on all of the cabinetry and in the coffee bar, I'm gonna do three coats. This is two coats. I still need a third coat because we're actually gonna move these cabinets that are in the kitchen out so that we can refinish the floors starting today. We are starting this project today. Move them out and I move them back in. I'm able to secure them to the wall and seam the lines and the space in between each of the cabinets so that they look really finished. So I'm gonna fill it with wood filler and then paint that as well so that it's just the face frames just look perfect. And then we can order all of the cabinet doors and we are gonna be painting those with the same color but I'm actually gonna be spraying those so it's a nice even finish. It didn't make sense to spray the actual box building the upper cabinets as well so you guys aren't going to want to miss the projects that are coming up we are refinishing the floors we are laying tile and bringing in all of the finishes into the guest bathroom you're definitely going to have to come back for episode three in the guest bathroom and episode five in the kitchen as we make over every room in our house and continue to renovate our 110 year old cottage i hope you guys enjoyed this video and this update if you haven't checked out any of the other renovations videos I'll leave them all linked for you uh, come back so that you can see the kitchen in all of its glory when we get more cabinets and also our countertops which I'm super excited about and subscribe so you don't miss any other episode in any other makeover in any other update in the house and I will see you guys again next Sunday bye guys